Good morning. My name is Shrenik. We all have gathered here today to recognize the delicate balance between our ambitions and the well-being of our planet. Knowing that the choices we leave today leaves the legacy for tomorrow. Being an industrialist and an entrepreneur, my life changed since the COVID struck. From a food industry towards social, economic, and environmental costs is the path I chose to follow and moved towards a sustainable initiative. Many of you might think, what's the urgency in embracing sustainability is to our actions. For those who surprisingly may not know, let me give you a quick recap of the last three fatal decades. Human influence and actions has warmed the climate at an unprecedented rate of the last 2,000 years. According to the World Health Organization, around 7 million people die every year due to the air pollution. A climate change would lead to another 2 to 3.5% decline in the global food production. The World Wild Federation says around 69% of the species population have decreased since the year 1970s. And the United Nations says by the year 2050, around 5.7 billion people would live in water scarcity areas. Do I mean to scare you? No. Am I trying to convince you to be a better people? No, not at all. All I'm trying to convince you to see and look at sustainability through the realistic lens. The most pressing issue today in the world is the global warming made by our actions. And the researchers and the scientists around the world says that this can be mitigated through various ways like use of renewable energy, carbon offset projects like afforestation and reforestation, use of energy efficient improvement projects, use of electric vehicles, and many, many more. Of all the above method of conservation, there is one field that is rapidly growing. That's the field of sustainable fuel. We all cannot deny the fact that the petroleum industry is here to stay. We can push electric vehicle. We can push this electric vehicle up to the goal of the year 2030. But what about the countries like India, where the goal of the year 2050 seems far distant? This is where bioethanol or the ethanol comes right into its place. This renewable fuel is made through biomass crops like rice, corn, sugarcane, and even agricultural waste, and used as a blend with petrol to make a clean and a green transport sector. Now let us process this fuel as a new fuel. It has to fit and adapt to an existing infrastructure. And moreover, it has to be green. Guess what? Bioethanol fits right into this. The most important advantage of the bioethanol is the greenhouse gas emission. It's the reduction of the greenhouse gas emission. I'm sure all of you might know that the greenhouse gas emission is a layer in the atmosphere which is filled, which is composed of four major components. The carbon dioxide, the methane, the nitrous oxide, and the ozone. The bioethanol reduces an average of 
greenhouse gas emission when we make this fuel out of the corn and an average of 88% to 108% reduction in the greenhouse gas emission when we use cellulosic feedstocks like rice straws, wheat straws, switchgrass, and even the forest residues like the wood chips. This all seems so good to be true. Am I trying to convince you to support in my effort? No, I'm not. Because India as a nation committed to the climate change is embracing this transition through a program called the Ethanol Blending Program or the EBP. This program aims to produce the bioethanol in our very own country and further enhance the bioethanol to blend, to use it with the petrol. I'm sure that you all might know most of the petrol stations in our country, we have the bioethanol as a blend into the petrol with 10% by default, which is called as E10. India aims to go with a 20% blend, or you can say as E20 by the year 2025. And for that, India is asking the institutes and the organizations across the country to join hands with them to support this amazing initiative so that they can reduce the greenhouse gases and thereby reduce the global warming. Today, most of the bioethanol in India is produced through sugarcane. And since the last three years, India is pushing the organization to start making bioethanol through the biomass crops, which is available in abundant supply. Now, let's know what's behind this amazing biofuel, the ethanol. Let me take you into the work of the bioethanol plant. Ethanol, also known as the ethyl alcohol, is a renewable fuel which can be made out of three different technologies. The first generation technology, which is the 1G, made from the biomass crops like corn, rice, sugarcane. The second generation, which is a 2G, which is made from the agricultural waste, like the switchgrass, the rice straws, the wheat straws, and the forest residues. And the third generation technologies, the 3G, which is made from the microalgae, which is grown in abundance at the coastal areas. Today, India is mainly producing the bioethanol from the 1G technology. India mainly produces rice, corn, and sugarcane and sugar in abundance. These annual renewable crops consume the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and converts into biomass and the oxygen. And in turn, this biomass as a raw material is used to convert into the bioethanol through the process of fermentation and the distillation technology. The carbon dioxide produced during the process of fermentation is further captured and stored using the cutting edge technology. Moreover, there's another beautiful co-product which is developed during the production of bioethanol, known as the dried distilled grain solid, or the DDGs. This byproduct is an amazing source of nutrition, having a very high content of protein, ranging from 40 to 60%, and acts as an amazing source for the animal feed industry. Hence, this entire process is a zero wastage and a net zero carbon emission process. The versatility and the availability of the raw material coupled with zero wastage and net zero carbon life cycle makes this process a sustainable initiative for a cleaner transportation sector. What else can be derived from the bioethanol plant? Carbon credits is the answer for that. In order to incentivize institutes and organizations who create a positive impact to the environment by reducing or by removing the carbon dioxide gas from the atmosphere and by capturing it, 
these certificates of carbon credits are awarded to them. These certificates are recognized and awarded by international agencies like UNFCC, VERA, and Gold Standards using approved methodologies and ensures that they go through a strict verification process and gives the certificate to those organizations. Fortunately, the bioethanol falls under this category of the approved methodologies and can avail for such certificates. Now, how can we make further the planet even better and greener? While maintaining a balance between the economic sustenance and the environmental stewardship. By reducing the dependence on the fossil fuel and switching towards renewable energy like solar and the wind, coupled with the bioethanol production, will further enhance the, the sustainability initiative. Also adding to that, by implementing proper technology and reducing the overall power consumption of the process and thereby increasing the efficiency would enhance and help reduce the energy production of the world. There are two other major issues and the major areas of concern for the people today living. The, one, the first one is the waste management and the second one is the water scarcity. A proper waste management does not only reduce the air pollution, it also reduces the water pollution and the soil pollution. And the bioethanol plant and the process helps reduces this issue of the waste management as it's a 100% zero wasted process, which means one kg of the raw material processed into the bioethanol plant gives you one kg of the finished product and is 100% sold into the market and nothing goes waste. The another major area of concern is the water scarcity. According to the World Health Organization, one out of three people living in the world do not have access to safe water or do not have access to safe drinking water. And due to that, around 8.3 lakh people die every year by consuming unsafe water. Again, a bioethanol process and the production helps reduce this issue as a bioethanol plant is a 100% zero discharge plant where the entire water which is used in the process is 100% recycled by using various technologies like multi-effect evaporator and an amazing water treatment plants. All these initiatives coupled together in a bioethanol plant ensures that the future generation and us has a better planet to live in. We all have an opportunity to support such initiatives and promote such green initiatives. There's a lot more scope in the field of renewable fuel. And I can tell you one thing, the next 30 years is the, is the years where people are going to focus more and more on the greener fuel. We all, each and every individual has an important responsibility to play towards this initiative. And every individual step we take holds the power to catalyze towards a sustainable future. We can aim for the sun. We can go carbon neutral. We can go net zero carbon emission. But how good does it sound and how feasible is it? After all, the true meaning of sustainability lies in its compromise and practicality. Thank you.